Welcome back, guys. We are back. NFC 26, my boy, WT, non-fungible cast 26. Uh, we have actually an interesting video, a brand new video, uh, something that we haven't talked about before. Uh, we looked into this game, and both of us got really, really excited. This game is called Block Lords, okay? This game now apparently has been out for a couple years or something, uh, but they're redoing it or they're turning it into blockchain or something. It's not fully released yet, um, but you can find videos from like two years ago or so, but it's not released yet. Um, and uh, I tell you, man, I'm really, really excited. This game, we can talk, we're going to talk all about it. Uh, we're going to get deep with it. Uh, it's a medieval based uh, game. You build families and stuff. We're going to break it all down. But first things first, WT, what is going on? Uh, what is new and exciting, man? Not much, bro. Been on vacation finally a few days ago, and I'm just getting over getting sick at like the worst possible time, but I'm on the mend, getting better. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to actually sleep for once because I've had one of those illnesses where you just can't sleep and you know how those goes. But enough about my ailments. Yes, <laughs> Block Lords. Wow. I'm just, the scale of this is not like nothing I've seen in this space so far. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into this. Uh, how you been? I've been good, man. I've been good. Just, you know, keeping the things going, the stream going, you know, the usual stuff. So for those that are new in here, if you're part of the Block Lords uh, community and you don't know who we are, my name is Capone Gaming or Bruno. This is WT. I'm a full-time Twitch streamer. We do weekly podcasts on play-to-earn uh, type games. Our podcast is called Non-Fungible Cast. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a little bit now, and uh, this is number 26. So first one for Block Lords, number 26 for our cast. Uh, and uh, we got a lot to talk about today. So Block Lords, um, you know, I got to say something, man. I love these kinds of games first of all i love the medieval uh era and any games i have to do with i just i'm obsessed with it i always have been always will be i just i love it so that right there already pulled me in uh it is a play to earn game that right there as well is something i'm very interested in that pulled me in as well so this is an mmo, MMO online strategy game uh and it's built around the blockchain technology so um you it's a really neat concept where you get these heroes they're like your nft um you can uh eventually they're gonna be farmers they can turn into warriors they can there's so many different ways to play you can play passively as a farmer you could play aggressively as a, as a warrior you could be a king you could be a lord um you can uh you know uh intertwine with other families and and breed and get children and then you have heirs and there's just it's so intricate there's so many levels to this game and uh, i want to break it all down for sure so uh, you start off with your hero, uh, that's your NFT, and uh, you build up your hero, it might start as a farmer, then a fighter, and then you work your way up to a lord, like I was saying. Uh, you get the resources along the way, which you can do whatever you want. You can take those resources, you can build an army with it, or uh, you could take those resources and you can invest in mead, uh, which you'll need to have children, which is, uh, I know WT loves that, man. He said, wait a minute, wait, you get mead and then you get children? He's like, I get it, I get it. Uh, you know, and that's where your family tree starts so you grow your family you become stronger you have more and and uh and all that stuff break that down wt what are your thoughts on all that and uh and the whole system there boy this is like a giant onion just so many different <laughs> layers of what's going on uh boy i don't even know where to begin with all this because we're, we're used to this space and the games have been pretty basic because making games we know is hard Integrating them with blockchain is hard. Keeping them secure is hard. And what these guys, uh, the, the MetaKing Studios is doing is they're taking a game that they created back around 2017-ish and they've revamped it to look even better. I've seen some of the old game footage. It looked pretty good. It looked pretty good. I liked it. And then I've seen some of the new pictures. No game footage out yet, but I've seen some of the new pictures of what they're doing and you could tell they definitely... Enhance the graphic, definitely enhance the detail. And they're putting that into a blockchain aspect of it's not even going to be played to earn with them all the way. They talk about play to share, which I don't mm -hmm. even know how they're going to pull that off, but I'm, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. They're going with Immutable X, which you know in my book, that's huge. Uh, I like playing on a platform with the game that I want to be involved in because you get that synergy going of whatever you put into that game. If you're staked at IMX, you're going to be getting some of those rewards back. You're supporting the ecosystem of the one that you like. And I absolutely like that. You obviously got the, the uh, no gas fees with ETH over there and all their scaling solutions that they have laid out. And just, boy, the stuff that they have lined up for this game, 
uh, like you said, the breeding, you could do the, the four different types, farmers, warriors, lords, and kings. And what I like about that scenario is what the one thing I do really like that they started out with, they've given four different genres a level of intensity that you want to play on. If you want to just log in every now and then, check all your little stuff, set up everything, you, you need to be a farmer. If you want to get a lot more involved, then you step up to the warrior and you get to go higher risk, higher reward. That's the way it goes. You can get injured. You can even die in this game. If you want to get really, really involved, you become a lord and you take over regions, which is like land. And you have to micromanage all this stuff in your regions. And then if you want to go absolutely berserk control freak, you try to become a king, which you have to be nominated by the lords. It's, it's absolutely immense this game what's yeah. your thoughts on all that it's it's an incredible system and i love that again i love the medieval era it's it's very similar like it's basically playing it out like you're there and i love that um i like the systems like i i love these kind of games i've played many castle builders i've been involved in them where you know you can you literally you own you can get as many castles as you want and then like people can come invade your castles and they steal them from you or you steal people's castles so you got to build these armies i play very aggressive in these games that's the way i play i've always i'm always army heavy and i just i just go all out that's how i always play and i intend to do the same in this game i want to just go army heavy go out just take over the world that's my style of play and i enjoy that i'm not more of the farmer guy i don't like to just sit back and let things happen i want to go out and make things happen um, uh, so I like that. Yeah, I love that. And I love that there's different ways to play. Like you said, there's the farmers, and that's fine. If that's what you're into, you like to sit back, chill, uh, get your farms ready, farm all the materials, sell them off, do what you got to do. That's totally cool. Uh, you want to be a warrior, like that's what I plan on being, going out, taking what I want. Um, that's that's my style of fun. That's my style of play. And then, Or you could be like a lord, a king, and that's more like you're just looking over, ruling the world and, and stuff like that. Uh, which is very time uh, consuming and intensive. So it's all, it depends on how you want to play it. And I love that. I love that a lot. You also mentioned permadeath. That That's amazing to me. I love that. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, you play your character's age. So you have to breed. And I like I, I breed. I say you have to have like kids and stuff because, you know, you need an heir. You need somebody. So if you own all this land and you have no kids, so if all you're focusing on is, is building up an army, going out attacking, you're not connecting with families, you're not making, making babies, you know, it's, and you die, your land is gone. So it goes and it goes out to where I think it was the last person attached or someone else. It goes out to, I don't know exactly how it's going to go out, but it goes out to somebody else. And, uh, and so you, there's, you got to focus on that too. So you got to kind of sit back, make sure your, your family tree is set up. You can like, uh, introduce, uh, families to families. Like we could have our families, uh, uh, connected. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's really cool. And I like that. And, uh, yeah, so I'm definitely going to be playing like an aggressive way when this game does come out. I like the permadeath aspect. Uh, again, like we're saying, uh, if you're a warrior, like you know, if you go out and attack, your your hero has a higher chance of getting killed in battle, so your your guy will die. Higher risk, higher reward. Obviously, if you're sitting back farming, your your chances of of you know f dying in battle are probably low. Unless maybe if someone comes in and invades, if that counts as a battle, I don't know. I don't know how that works. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be aggressive for sure, and I, and I like that, man. Uh, okay, so yeah, like I was saying, with getting married and having children is a huge part of the game. So if your hero dies and you have no heir, you lose everything so i don't know if it's everything or what how it works exactly do you but. think that goes up for auction then if you don't have an heir i i don't know say specifically i don't know it might be uh you know next in line somehow or if your family's connected somehow or something they, i have no idea they did say that like you can sell your kids in this which is crazy oh yeah it's like they made it like many of the time so like if you sell one of your kids to somebody mm -hmm. and they are the heir like a second or third kid or whatever and your two other kids die that other one that you sold to yeah, you're sold your kid off to. They're now the heir. So like, yeah. if your character dies, all your assets, not all. They said not all, but most of them would go to the heir, which is someone else. So like, yeah. got, like free stuff and it's crazy. It's just absolutely nuts what they got going on with this man. It's I, listen. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to I, like. I listen. They're gonna they're gonna piece it all together. They have the beautiful mind. They know what they're doing with it. But it's a lot. Like there's a lot of parts they got to connect. Um, just that alone, the the heir system, like. That's crazy. You you give away a hero, you sell a hero. Next thing you know, all of a sudden they're like, wait, how do I have twenty lands? You know, it's like because you know the the family died and you're the last one, last survivor. You know, all of a sudden you're gonna have whatever it is. You know, I don't know how it works, but you know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. That's amazing. So your hero is uh, is gonna be your your uh, your NFT and your digital avatar. So you register and the game will give you a hero off the bat. Now I don't believe you can choose if it's male or female off the start. Uh, I think it's randomly uh, uh, mm -hmm. given to you. 
And they are going to go the two genders, female, male, uh, to, for the breeding purposes. This is the medieval times, so they're going in that air that uh, that way. Um, now you can go to war with other people. You can attack and be attacked. I love that. Uh, you don't have to attack. You can just chill. We talked about that. Uh, the dynasty system. So that's the aging system we, we discussed a little bit as well. It's called the dynasty 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 system. I don't believe it's going to be put in right off the off the bat. I think they're going to kind of slowly bring that in, which I think is the right way to go because they want to make sure it's done right. If there if there's problems with it, that could be a problem. So you want to make sure you, uh-huh. you you test everything first, make sure it's all good, and then okay, it's time to put that in. Uh, what are your thoughts on the dynasty system? What are your thoughts on the breeding? What are your thoughts on on all that we've just talked about i like that they're giving people a chance to get their feet wet first figure out the parameters see the system before they turn on the age factor you can age even when you're not or you will age even when you're not playing so the older you get the higher probability you have a chance to like die in your sleep or you know die of tuberculosis (laughs) like uh, the oregon trail or whatever you know so uh as that goes over time People are kind of getting to get used to it. They'll probably figure out what is about the age where it starts getting too risky to not have an heir or to not be looking at converting to a new hero mm-hmm. or whatever. That'll play out over time. Uh, the 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 PvP system, it's going to be fun for those that like PvP. If you don't like PvP, I would probably stay away from it. It's it's going to be high <laughs> risk. It's going to be high risk. And mm-hmm. it's, it's a no man's land. So don't go in if you're going to cry about losing because it... It can and probably will happen to you at some point for everybody. You're going to have people and, like uh, me that are just going out and attacking. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be out there attacking. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm just a heads up. You know? <laughs> the breeding system, yes, the mead thing, it cracked me up. I, I, I rewound it like five times. Like, did he say mead? No. I, I wanted to make sure. I'm almost positive he did. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, blockchain fans. Uh, put it down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. We need likes. But I'm get, I digress here. The breeding system, uh, some things they said, what, whatever two you pair together, their main traits will transpire down to the next generation. So they were using the, uh, the, the example of a cow. I'll say, let's say he's a really good corn farmer and she's a really good corn farmer. You have a higher chance at breeding a really good corn farmer. But let's say you have some stud warriors and they're really good at fighting and you mate them together, then you're going to produce another good heir of a warrior most likely it's not always guaranteed but the chances are really high and the same thing with the uh the permadeath system even at a low age there's still uh, a young age there's still a small chance that you could die Mm -hmm. not likely but it's there it's Really put some teeth to this game, you know what I'm saying? I, I love that. I Honestly, man, I, <laughs> I love the concept through and through, all of it, from the permadeath to the battling to the – like you, you can pick your path if you want to be more of a farmer type. Or but I love all of that. And, uh, yeah, the fact that, you know, uh, you want to go to battle – because that's the thing. You need to have a little bit of risk in these games. If everything's too safe, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't bring that excitement. But there's that, that risk of losing your hero, losing your, your, your warrior – you know, it's like, do I really want to go out there and attack? Is it worth it? Like, is it worth if I go out and I lose my hero? Uh, is that is that worth doing? And I like that because it's not just like mindlessly, yeah, I'm going to go attack the city and whatever happens, happens. You literally got to think, okay, am I going to come out on top? Am I going to lose too many heroes or warriors or whatever it is? Is it worth doing it? Uh, and uh, and I love that. I love that concept a lot. I really, 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 really do. So um, now there's a lot of big names attached you know uh if, if you've been in here before and like like wt said guys uh don't forget to hit that like button it really helps out we're trying to get these uh, videos out there let's get those likes out there let us know if you're interested in this game if you've played this game before because like we talked about this game's been out for a couple years but the revamping and making play to earn and stuff um and let us know if you've if you tried the game if you're a part of the community how you found the channel let us know in the comments below and what you think of it let us know what you think of the, the video so there are a lot of big, big names uh, in this. Uh, Animoca Brands is huge. Uh, IMX is huge. Uh, WT and I are very firm believers in, in, in IMX. Uh, you know, we are part of uh, Gilded Guardians, which is another game uh, under the umbrella of IMX. And, uh, and, and we're firm, firm, firm believers. in Anything that IMX touches, we're very confident in, uh, which is huge. Uh, YGG, Yield, uh, Yield Ga- uh, Guild is in here. 
They are massive. Uh, is it uh, double? What is it? Uh, double peaks? What are they called? Uh, double peaks. They're in it. They're massive as well. So there's some really big guilds uh, that are coming in, and that right there is huge because these people come in and they're bringing in hundreds, if not thousands. They're bringing thousands of players with them. You know, YG uh-huh. comes in. They're bringing all their player base in there. Uh, double peaks come in. They're bringing all their player base in there. So that right there is bringing communities in right off the bat, uh, which is good. What a game needs to survive is a community. So if you have a lot of players coming in, uh, that. That's already a good start. And YGG, they don't mess around. Uh, when they come in, they come in big. So uh, that uh-huh. is huge. And like I said, Animoca Brands, anything they touch is huge. IMX, huge. Uh, what do you think of these names uh, coming in? The supporters, the backers, uh, people in their corner. Uh, what are your thoughts? People know my thoughts on IMX. I'm not going to beat that dead horse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Animoca Brands, absolutely huge. If you don't know who Animoca Brands in this space, you're, you're living under a rock. Uh, my question with these big massive guilds coming in uh the 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 founder was talking about play to share for controlling whale um dominance in the game and i love the concept and what they were saying of like incentivizing the whales or the big power players to put back into the game because it would benefit them how are they going to pull that off? I have no idea. My head's off for them for trying, coming up with this concept. I don't understand the engineering part of it to get that to happen yet. I'm, I'm very intrigued, though, to see how this plays out. And my, I, I wish them the best of luck with it. We're, we're used to this system. We've seen it time and time again, the extraction model. We know it's a, it's a short-term ploy, basically. And, you know, we've, we've talked about it repeatedly on, the, on this podcast. And everybody knows it now. Everybody knows. Secret's out. Extraction models don't last long. And so you have to incentivize people to want to be part of the community, want to be part of the game, and put back some. You're always going to have people that extract, but you got to be able to put back some. So I'm very interested to see how they come out with this play-to-share model because I could totally see YGG, Double P coming in here and just taking over large regions. And once they take over... If you're not under their umbrella, you're it's like the mob, man. You need that protection, you know, to do anything. And if you're not, how is that gonna play out? So, man, good luck to you guys. I hope you can pull this off. I'm looking for, forward to see how you do it. Yeah, that's that's a, it's a good point you say that because a lot of these play to earn games, I think people have it figured out. They come in early, they do what they gotta do, and they 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 get out. And that's the thing is you gotta you gotta deal with with the whales. That's just the, the reality of it. You have to please the whales, but at the same time, you can't give them the entire power because everyone else kind of you know holds the bag at the end. So you gotta be very, very there's a tricky balance, and hopefully they can figure mm-hmm. it out. Uh, and like these these guilds like YGG and and and, and you know, these big guilds that come in, uh, basically how it works, they all they run under like a rental system. So that's that's, that's how they work. So YGG will buy a lot of the assets, so the NFTs and all that stuff, and then they have a lot of these scholars that are underneath them. And basically, how it works is, you know, the the bigger earners in there, in under their umbrella, they will hand out first all these NFTs. All right, go ahead and play. So they will play. They earn off this thing, and then YGG gets a cut out of it. So. Again, you know, it's like they're why it's a business at the end of the day. Why is a business? They got to run. They got to be able to, to survive. So yes, there has to be that balance where you extract, but you can also keep it in. So you need to you need to have that recycling uh-huh. me- mechanic uh, that you know. Yes, you want to pull out, but it's you have to put it back in that will benefit you as well. And uh, that's like a burning me- mechanism, and that's what they're going to need. And I think that's where the mead comes in, and and uh, you know you got to build your armies. You're going to use the resources to build your armies. Without this resource, you can't build the armies. So yeah, you can you can take your stuff out. Out, but you're leaving yourself exposed because you don't have an army to defend yourself. So that's right. the beautiful mechanic they have where you got to kind of recycle your stuff back in to keep yourself sustainable. Because if you're just pulling everything out, you're weakening your defenses or your yeah. units or your castle or whatever, you know, whatever the system is, and someone else is going to come in and clean up. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I think uh, there's there's got to be that balance. I think the burning mechanic they have with the mead and, and you know, building the army and all that stuff, I think that's going to counter it as much as they can. I think it's a good, a good system. And and again, we got to see how it plays out. Uh, I am super, super stoked about it. Um, and I know all my resources are going to my army, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just I'm going in, man. That's just how I play. You know, win or lose, win, lose, or draw, man. We have fun with it. So, uh, all right. Can I hire you? Can I hire you? I'll probably be a hire farmer. Me. That's usually 
I just I don't have the time See? to sink. So I might be a farmer. I might See? have to hire you out to protect. Tell you me. what, you be the farmer. I'll be your mercenary. Just give me all the stuff. Help me raise my army and let's go. I like okay. it. I like it. Uh, okay, so there's gonna be 200 regions to start. That's the land, correct? What do you know about this? Because I'm not too familiar with this. Eventually, there's gonna be 3,500. So explain the regions. Explain the land. Uh, I don't know what you know about it. Uh, break it down for me. Uh, regions is just like land. You got to be a lord uh, to have a region. So if you're, there'll have be 200 lords to start off with, and eventually there'll be 3,500 lords when they open up that more region expansion. And they didn't say for sure if 3,500 would be the cap. I kind of suspect not, because if they grow, they're going to want more lords and lands and competition and all that stuff. So I think that's just to start off with. I think it's a good, modest easing into it we know how this space is we know how this stuff's tough and if you do it all at once usually there's problems so you got to kind of slowly come in it's like a testing period they did say that the uh the nfts will be coming out this summer and it's possible play testing sometime this year most likely the game be out in 2023 if i had to guess late 2023 if not 2024 we've 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 seen delays in every single project we've been involved in or seen out in space. It just happens. Uh, you can't rush this stuff. And uh, yeah, I, it, probably having land is a good idea, just like most of these projects. And yeah. uh, it's going to be interesting to see the balancing they have to do between all these, between the farmers, the warriors, the lords, and the kings, because if one gets too powerful, it'll dominate the other one. So you got to have that fine line. and. Man, see, I love nice. that. I love yeah. that because how that works, and, I, and I've seen it in, in other games I've played. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously this is a different game, but it's like when someone gets too strong, everyone's like, "Yo, listen, man, we, we got to do something about that." And that's when you see people come <laughs> together and they're like, "Yo, we gotta, we gotta handle this before it gets out of control." And then you see people working together, and it's, and that's how like the wars start. And it's just, man, things can get crazy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so how? So you're saying there's 200 regions of land to start. Uh, so when you make the character and you start the game, you have no land. There's nothing. You just kind of you're a character out there. How does this? How does it start? How do we start? You start as a basic character, uh, probably pretty low stats, common character, and that's the free to play aspect of it, which is cool. Hey, yeah, we need free to play. Absolutely. And you work, you work your way up. Obviously, it's going to take longer. It's harder. And then when the NFT sale comes out, I don't know how they have it all structured yet, but you'll be able to probably buy better starting pieces, so you get a little jump. That's how this works. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really all the details that they got out that I've seen so far. I, I don't have a problem with it. That's just, that's what's typical in the space. And that's how they're going to do it from my understanding. Right. I, I, I like the, uh, I like that. For me, I think free to play has to be in every game. You have to have that at some, at some sort of level, you have to have free to play. Yes. They're going to be hindered in a way to, they're not gonna be able to earn or whatever, go at play as deep as someone else, but they're still there. You need the player base. If you're just focusing on a certain, you know, uh, play to earn. You're not letting the free to play players in. You're really hindering the growth of the game. I think free to play is important. Um, and give them a chance to grow. Yes, it'll be slower, but give them a chance to get in there and, and grow as well and, uh, and build a player base like that and a community around that. I, I think it's huge. Uh, now the NFT sale is this summer. Uh, it might, uh, be some play testing before this year. Game likely to be out in the 20, 2023. Uh, which I think is a lot of games. I think right now, because we're in that stage, right? I think we're in a stage right now where all the games are coming in. They're building. This is like the working stage. Just when everyone's heads down, they're working. They're trying to get their product out. And I think 2023 is going to be a very big year for play to earn mm -hmm. um, and all these kind of blockchain games. I think that right now everyone's heads are down. They're they're putting the, the work in. And 2023, I think, is just going to explode. And uh, yeah, this is one of those ones I definitely want to get my hands on. I'm going to be playing this very, very... I love this. Like, this is right in my wheelhouse. This is the kind of game I absolutely love. So, uh, you know, I like that. And like I say, we, are, we can like connect families and stuff like, you know what I mean? If, if, if we could connect our families and help each other and stuff, I like that yep. stuff. You know, you make a little group and you help each other and you defend each other. And I don't know how the, all the mechanics of the game, but, uh, you know, how cool would that be if someone's attacking you and you're like, yo man, listen, I need you. And I'm coming over there and I help you out and say, yo man. You know, give me one of your kids, you know, or something. I don't know, man. Give me one of your kids and breed them with mine, and we're going to have a family tree, and they're going to marry this one. And I don't know. I like that, man. I think it's cool. So, uh, But I like the whole concept. So I'm definitely going to be getting involved in this, um, and I just can't wait to see what else what happens, what happens in the future, and, and when we get more information about it, we can talk about it. So this is just what we know right now. Uh, we just found out about this game, you know, a few weeks ago. We've been kind of looking into it, and and, uh, and I like what I see. I like what I see. 
I like what I see. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, this is not a solo game. They, mm. if you don't believe in community, you better real quick because you can't make it on your own in this game. I'm, I'm pretty willing to bet and put my reputation on that. So, uh, yeah, they, they, boy, they have really gone for high air on this. And if they can pull this off and even, even at just a, a decent fashion, mm-hmm. it's going to be big. It's going to be real big. And this is one of those games if they can pull this off. This could be a 10 plus year game, man. I, I don't throw that that out there lightly. It's just they have so many facets going on. And this is the kind of stuff that'll really get people interested to to come and invest that time or that money and be a part of a community that's working together. Like even if you don't want to play a lot, hey, I'll I'll just I'll keep kicking you crops to help out the team and because I can't right. invest a bunch of time and you let the hardcore players do the rest and it just People like that. They like feeling involved. They like, even if they can't play a lot, being part of the community. And I think this really opens that up for a lot of people. So I'm wishing them the best of luck. They have a lot of balancing to do. And uh, yeah, good luck to you guys. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this game grow, Merle. 100%. And like you, like we were saying earlier with, uh, you know, you can have, like, if you breed and you have, like, someone that's, like, a really good farmer or a really good uh, warrior and stuff, like, there's so many different branches and just those right there are intricate enough as it is so yeah like i'm just excited to see how it plays out uh, i like this uh is there anything that we missed uh wt anything you want to talk about anything you want to close up before we uh, shut her down it's early on this project too that matters uh, a lot yes. of projects i don't like chasing projects that are at their peak it, it just time and time again you usually get wrecked mm-hmm. it's early so they have a pre-registration going on right now i highly suggest you get in now at least for the pre-registration uh, it's on their Discord. Maybe we'll throw it uh, down below for their pre-registration and uh, leave us a like and comment and help us out. And boy, let's go, buddy. Yeah. So with this pre-registration, I think you get like a free chest or something and it comes with a few, a uh, couple of heroes or something. I don't know what it does. Uh, I think so. I'm not quite sure. I just yeah. know the pre-registration is going on now. It's not too hard. You, you sign up with a, an email, you authorize with Twitter, and then you connect with your wallet. It's It's all on their website. Go to their Discord use their official links mm-hmm. use yes. their official links please you got to put in that discipline so you don't get scammed by people out there okay mm-hmm. yeah absolutely absolutely uh yeah again guys uh i'm sure we're gonna do more videos on this i would love to get people from the team on there uh you know we're gonna reach out see if they want to come and talk maybe they can explain in deeper detail better detail that we've you know anything we've missed because you know they know more than we do about this we're just kind of on the outside looking in trying to kind of uh, learn as we go uh but yes thank you guys if you're watching it this far uh, this is Capone Gaming or Bruno WT right here. Don't forget to click the like button, leave a comment, let us know, sub to the channel. We do these weekly. We do talk uh, different games. I want to be doing more about this. This is something I do want to get invested in and involved in for sure. So uh, yeah, we might be even doing giveaways in the future with it and stuff. So make sure you stick around, get to know us a little bit. We have a really good community built in around NFTs and the podcast and you know multiple games and and communities. We're all built into here with with Twitch and and uh, uh, the ETH community and Solana community and different games and stuff. So. So uh, it's a really nice place to get to know people, and and uh, and uh, we got a really good spot. So uh, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, uh, we appreciate you. We are out of here, and we'll see you soon. Peace.